Benchmark, the voice of business. Presented by LMD. On this week's edition of Benchmark, an overview of global business news starts off our show today, in particular, the downgrading of five Eurozone economies by Fitch. Then in our feature segment, we turn the spotlight on Aravinda Pereira, Managing Director of Sampath Bank, for his views on the banking sector. And we wrap up this edition with L&D columnist and market analyst, Hasitha Premaratna, who discusses Sri Lanka's economy and the stock market. That's the lineup for Benchmark this week. Fitch has downgraded five Eurozone economies, citing poor financial flexibility, the absence of growth and a bleak economic outlook. And the IMF warns of a world oil embargo if the West imposes sanctions on Iran. This is Benchmark and I'm Savitri Rodrigo. Thanks for tuning in. There was a double drop of ratings for heavyweights Italy and Spain, each by two notches. Italy's rating dropped from A plus to A and Spain's was cut from A to AA minus status. There was also a downgrade of two points for Slovenia, with Belgium and Cyprus both falling by one. Meanwhile, the New York-based credit rating agency also cut its outlook for the Republic of Ireland. Ireland managed to secure its BBB rating, but is placed on Fitch's negative outlook list, an indication that a future downgrade might be on the cards. Fitch made several comments on the impact of the deeper debt crisis brewing in the Eurozone and stressed the importance of fostering closer ties between members. Quote, in Fitch's opinion, the Eurozone crisis will only be resolved as and when there is a broad economic recovery. Unquote. On to that story of a possible world oil embargo. The International Monetary Fund has warned that if the West imposes financial sanctions on Iran, its ripple effect could cause a world oil embargo. According to the IMF, global crude oil prices could rise by as much as 30% if Iran halts oil exports as a result of sanctions. The US and Europe have threatened sanctions if Tehran does not halt its nuclear program, which they maintain is being used to develop weapons and build nuclear arms, a charge that the Iranian government vehemently denies. The IMF is of the opinion that the shock to the market as a result of the news could be as bad as the one experienced in 2011 during the Libyan revolution. During the civil unrest in Libya, oil prices rose to over 100 US dollars a barrel. The International Monetary Fund says that the threat of a blockade is likely to trigger an initial oil price jump of 20 to 30 percent or about 20 to 30 US dollars a barrel pushing oil prices up to $140 or $150. And in other news, the US-based Asia Society says that China has surpassed the World Bank as the biggest lender to developing countries in the past year. In countries like Zambia, Angola, Cameroon, Ghana and Nigeria, China's yuan is fast replacing World Bank dollars on investments in new roads, power stations, hospitals and other infrastructure developments. The BBC reports that over the past few years, delegations from large banks in China have been trotting the globe, signing multi-billion dollar deals with some of the world's poorest nations in Latin America, Asia and Africa, at times undermining the World Bank's funding assistance. Staying with Asia, Starbucks and Tata Global Beverages India announced a partnership to open 50 coffee shops in Mumbai and Delhi by August this year. The joint venture named Tata Coffee will serve 100% locally sourced food and beverages. Tata Global Beverages is the world's second largest tea company, while Starbucks has 17,000 cafes around the world. In Singapore, unemployment hit a record low last year. According to preliminary estimates from the Manpower Ministry, more than 121,000 new jobs were created in 2011, with the majority being in the services sector. Expatriate dominated the markets by securing 79,800 jobs, almost two-thirds of all new opportunities created during the year. As a result, the unemployment rate fell to just under 3% for citizens and permanent residents, the lowest rate in 14 years. And finally, the French government cut its 2012 growth forecast from 1 
to 0.5 percent to take into account the deterioration of the economic situation following the eurozone's sovereign debt crisis. Unemployment in France is currently 10 percent, with almost 3 million people out of jobs. We take a commercial break now. Stay with us for Spotlight. <music>